Our daughter Sophia was four months old and we noticed that her eyes were unusually red and she wasn't herself, she was lethargic. Within two hours of being in the ER, they tried to send us home three times and we refused to leave yeah, because she was starting to turn purple and uh, then her eyes swelled shut. She was in a coma after the first 24 hours. She swelled so much they had to put an IV in the top of her head. Mm -hmm. The doctors were stumped, they didn't know what it was. The ninth day that we were in the hospital, they had a senior pediatrician and he said, I think I might know what this is. Yeah. It presents like Kawasaki's disease. Cooper was about three years old. He had just turned three. And he had one night where he had really bad pain in his stomach and he was waking up about every 45 minutes screaming. Within six, seven hours of us first going into the doctor, um, they pulled out his appendix. He still has the fever and the pain did not go away when the medicine wore off. This is not normal. So we sat in the hospital um, for another seven days. Um, asking lots of questions, wondering what was going on. It was about day 12 of symptoms of him being homesick and then in the hospital of him having um, the symptoms that he did. It was then that they diagnosed him with Kawasaki disease. That was, that was the first time we heard about Kawasaki's disease. Yeah, we never heard about it before. We didn't know what to do. I mean, we just did research online and, and try to find out more and more information about what the disease was about and how it was gonna basically change our lives from from that point forward. Yeah, there just wasn't a lot out there. Um, we did finally figure out that there is a 10-day, vital 10-day window uh, to be diagnosed and treated um, to uh, save a child's heart or have a chance of saving a child's heart. And so we missed that. Um, and with Cooper, we were at day 12 and Cooper was diagnosed with uh, Kawasaki disease with coronary aneurysm. We were very blessed and they caught it on the ninth day yeah. and she didn't suffer any severe cardiac complications. We, we actually never knew how much talent she really had until we really started taking her to all these little, you know, competitions and, and the talent shows. She just recently auditioned for America's Got Talent and she was actually on television this season. She's, uh, she's doing really, really good now. Nobody can stop her. When you live at home with a son that missed that window, I am ready to do whatever I have to do to make this more known. The fundraising part of Kawasaki Kids Foundation is the most important because it brings those dollars that we need to do research, education, to support the families dealing with Kawasaki disease, to make pamphlets, to make posters, to get that awareness out there. We have big uh, lofty goals for 2016. Uh, we are wanting to raise a quarter of a million dollars uh, to fight this disease. And those funds will come from many 5Ks that we'll do across the United States. We've got uh, five right now that are ready to go for 2016. We've got the golf tournament that is gonna be bigger than ever. And parents uh, of KD kids are wanting to, uh, to jump on board and do uh, small events in their area. When I started this three years ago, I would have never guessed that it would have been as beneficial and done so much for so many people as it has. We started in our basement, wanting to just help one kid. That's changed. We've already helped in saving 11 kids across the United States and in other countries. But those kids were touched by the foundation and saved with no heart problems because of the foundation. We've raised more funds due to the amazing people that have come to our events, the amazing sponsors, and we are so excited for 2016 and the years past that so that we can 
Make this a household name that we can save more kids, that we can put more funds to research, that we can educate. I live with this daily. And we are going to make a difference. We've literally touched the lives of thousands, but it's not enough. What we really need at this point in our journey is to partner with two to three key sponsors and help us grow awareness and educate the public and ultimately raise funds by partnering with that company and their brand. Their company, their brand, their product could help save a child's life. Until it's a household name, our job's not done.